Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a take on Green Black Saga Depths, thanks to a pretty generous challenge from that Maverick Joe. This is his second challenge, and this time around it's going to be trying to 5-0 with a Depths or Maverick League with Dark Confidant, uh, which is really cool. I'm a big fan of Dark Confidant. I think it slots really well into Green Black Depths, and I think that now with Urza Saga giving the deck a plan B, it's going to be pretty cool to see how this deck goes. I tried it out a few times before Green White or Naya came about, and it seemed pretty promising, so hopefully we can get there with a version like this. Hey Elo, welcome. I've broken it up so we can see kind of the, the fetchable lands here. We have two bayous, a swamp and a, f a forest, and then four verdants. We have four Urborgs and one Yav, and then our crop Elvish Reclaimer Suite is one Step, one Caracas, one Bog, one Ghost Quarter, one Beseju. Kind of the typical targets you typ you usually see in a, in a list like this. Beseju is pretty nice because we do have Loam to get it back, and we do have Map to find it. Uh, you can also do some things like crop into it and then put it into the bin and then Loam it back, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, and the Yav in here is a one of, still allows for the turn three. Uh, with Dark Depths and Stage, but it also allows some pretty cool lines with double crop rotation, being able to go and get Yavimaya and Depths, tap them both for, for green, having one left over, and then go and get Stage, which Urborg doesn't allow you to do sometimes. So it's nice to have all of these. We do have a small Saga package as well with one map, one needle, typically for Wasteland and one Shadow Spear, mainly to get through threats like Flying Thopters or Flick Wisp, other Flyers, which is pretty sweet. It's also just a really nice card to have on a 3-4 or 4-5 Elvish Reclaimer in a matchup like uh, Delva, where the, the life swing and threat can be can be really hard to beat. Two cards that I'm trying out are Witherbloom Command, or two copies of Witherbloom Command, I should say. I think this card is pretty cool. It offers the deck a nice two-for-one. The ability to mill cards and then get a land back is relevant, especially with Beseju in the deck. Uh, giving a creature neg 3, neg 1 is also quite relevant, looking at the creatures in the format right now, which is nice. And it also gives some reach if our opponent has done something like uh, maybe double fetched to 18 and then played an Uro to go back to 21. To be able to deal that extra 1 or 2 life is, is pretty cool, so Witherbloom is nice. I also have one copy of Inquisition. I did want to have two copies, I just wasn't sure where I could fit the extra copy, and I didn't want to play 61, so hopefully we'll see uh, maybe where that can fit in, in future. In the board, I have Ley Lines for Graveyard Hate. You see a lot of combo decks, especially Graveyard decks in uh, Legacy League, so I do like the thought of just having Ley Line here. It is also a, a, a spell we can cast, which is quite nice. Um, I did have Surgical in other builds, especially because Surgical and Thoughtseize or Hand Disruption in general lines up quite well, where if you take a, a pretty pronounced card like uh, Show and Tell and then Surgical it from them, it can be pretty good, but a lot of the time that doesn't really line up the way you want it, so Leyline's just nice because it, it really buys us time against these graveyard decks to just combo out and hopefully combo faster than them, because I think other than hand disruption, we're really just looking to combo faster than other combo decks. And anyways, post board to buy time against those decks is fantastic because, uh, you know, Leyline, it's perfect because it doesn't take any tempo away from us. We get to still do our turn one, turn two, turn three play. Um, and just, yeah, lines up, I think, right now with the format pretty well. Plague's obviously great against some of the tribal decks, things like Death and Taxes or Elves. Sudden Edict is quite nice as well, just a uncounterable removal spell is really nice, especially against Delver. Uh, Force of Vigor, just a really nice card. I think in Leagues I'm pretty happy with Force of Vigor over something like Seeds of Innocence, because I do want that flexibility of both artifacts and enchantments. 
Um, I haven't seen too much 8 cast in... Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen too much 8 cast in League, so I don't really need see the need for Seeds of Innocence. Uh, especially when we have a pretty good plan against them anyway. We have the 20-20, uh, the uh, and then of course going for Shadow Spear if we need to get through Thopters, which is pretty nice. So uh, all in all, I think that should be pretty good. I then have an extra Pitting Needle, a Retrofit of Foundry, and a uh, Soul Guide Lantern as my targets for Saga post board. The second Needle, just in case I want it against something like Death and Taxes, where they have both uh, Port, Wasteland, and Caracas. Uh, I also have a Tabernacle in the board for some of the go-wide strategies and also for some of the other card, some of the other kind of effects like Empty the Warrens where I might see that coming in against uh, any sort of Storm deck that might think we're on Veil of Summer post board, but we'll see how that, how that plays up. Hopefully, I don't think so. I don't think MTGO does maintenance at this time, so hopefully that's not the issue here. Uh, and hopefully it is just internet. <laughs> but hopefully it's just a one-off internet issue. And it looks to be my internet. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that it's my internet. All right, I'm gonna be back in five minutes. I'm just gonna reset my modem and then see how this goes. So I will see you all then. Hey team, apologies for the small technical error, but we are back into a Legacy League with Saga playing with play points. Nice. Yeah, sadly in Australia, internet isn't as great as other places around the world, so sometimes you do run into difficulties with speed. But yeah, really keen to test this out and see how Green Black goes, because there has been a lot of focus on Naya recently, but it's definitely tough from a competitive standpoint to say, let's play Green Black over the version of Depths right now that's probably doing the best of of any depths deck i think lands definitely definitely has a lot of merit in the current metagame but you really need those players that are, are land experts playing them and you just don't see them as, as much as usual unfortunately all right we have our match which is really nice Whew. All right, up against Hammer Fist. What do we have? We have a pretty nice hand. Um, turn one stage with Mox. Discarding stage, Needle and Wasteland. Pretty happy to keep this. We have some pretty nice draws as well. The question is, do I even want to play out the Moxon just yet? I guess in case I play Needle here on Wasteland in the blind, and then we can hold up a Bog, which is nice, so... But Jukabog would also be a second black source for the Hex Mage, which is kind of cool. Volcanic. Verdant. Interesting. I'm pretty happy to play it safe here. At least a little bit safe. I don't think I need to... Play the Hex Mage out here, because like, I currently have access to... Two colors, so we can't play Hex Mage and also hold up Crop. So here I'm happy just to play the stage. And pass back. I could go with the Vern Catacombs. Hmm. Let's 
Yeah, I think stage is fine. Brainstorm, okay. Volk itself doesn't give away too much, and Volk without a turn one play is something you don't typically see in Legacy. Hey Panda, welcome. Nothing. Bob. Hmm. I don't mind playing out Bob here. My other, the other world here is actually just holding up the crop, but I think Bob is, is fine for now. If this is Blue Red Delver, uh, Brazen Borrower is a card to think about in the main deck that answers the 2020. And then obviously just counter magic. Watery Grave. Okay, this is going to be a... Uh, Grixis Shadow deck, potentially. Which is pretty cool. Um, Bob living here, though, is not something that I'd expect. Okay. One nice thing here with the fetch and play is that we currently have access with the crop rotation to make this reclaimer a 3 4. I'm pretty happy to fetch in response to this. Um, what card don't I want? It's probably just the swamp. Float a mana and crop away the swamp. Yeah, greatness at any cost. Thankfully, this version is not playing not of this world, which I have seen before, but taking seven off Bob is, is pretty rough. Nice, okay. Very interesting. Against Grixis, I might suspect Sudden Edict in the main deck, which having multiple creatures on board just beats, which is quite nice. So this is going to be an interesting one. I like the chokes. If it is going to be a Grixis piece... Hey, Kath, welcome. Grixis. They didn't give away too much. Brainstorm Thoughtseize. They were playing Watery Grave, so that makes me put them on some sort of uh, Death Shadow or Delver style list. Or maybe even a mid-range Death Shadow list. I wouldn't put them on uh, anything like... Hmm. Yeah, I think just small tweaks here, like I reckon Caracas can be dropped. I do like the Moxen around days as well. Jerry, too kind, my friend. I hope you're well. I hope you have a nice cup of coffee with you. It's good to see you. Always a pleasure, pleasure to see you in chat. Hey Shade, welcome. Um, I don't mind the retrofitter foundry. Uh, we didn't see Wasteland, but I will keep the Needle as a just-in-case. Loam's relevant. Witherbloom's pretty nice. Hey, Even. Welcome. I don't mind the Hand Disruption either. Especially if they're playing uh, Expressive Iteration. And this is like a, a, a grindy matchup, then they're going to always have cards in hand, which is nice. Just go back from a week at the beach with the wife and kiddo. Nice, nice. Very cool to hear. 
Yeah, bog might not be needed. I could see, like, yeah, bog and crackers coming out. Hmm. I'm just going to drop one piece of hand disruption. I guess in case of submerge, I might want to keep the thought seizers over inquisition. Jace potentially, even just taking a force of will sometimes can be key. So I think the two life loss isn't too bad. I'm also going to drop a crop uh, and bring in the soul guide just in case I do want some sort of uh, piece to hit their, their graveyard. They didn't see... <laughs> this is not a keep. Uh, but it's a pretty funny hand. That's crazy. Oh, very different. Uh, it is a two lander. So I could drop the Moxon or try to just go for turn one Bob. Hmm. Oh, I might have... I actually missed out on, on Dried Arbor in this list. I think I actually made a mistake. Yeah, no Dried Arbor. I guess because I wasn't playing Green Suns, I didn't really... I thought like a, a Besaidu was kind of cool in that spot. Um, This is actually an interesting one. I, I don't mind it. But I am going to do something a little bit sketchy and keep it without a black source. Because I don't really want to lose the Moxon here. Okay. To be fair, yeah, I would then turn my forest into bayous, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Alright, so the Ponder was a chose not to shuffle stage. I'm just going to go with Forest here, Paz. I don't think I'm in a situation where I want to throw this uh, Forest away to like crop into Bog for a turn 2 Bob. Because currently we just have the combo in both crop and... Uh, that's been stage, which is, which is quite nice. We did, we did take our bog, very correct. <laughs> Depths, okay. Well, that's quite nice. Uh, that is going to be fine. Ooh, Wasteland? They did... Interesting. Second choke. I think because of the second choke, I'm pretty happy just to throw a choke here. Also having double stage means the wasteland doesn't just stop our combo straight away. I, th I think it's too dangerous to, to, uh, to go for the crop, but that could just be me being too patient as well. In my head, my turn two play was just holding up crop rotation around days.
Yeah, exactly. I felt... Ooh, interesting. Please take the bob. Hey, there we go. They hit one crop. Let's see if they have a second force or not. I would love to get an untapped mana source here. We don't. So I could crop into Yavimai that allows the Dark Depths to tap for mana, but then I'm still using my one mana anyway, so uh, we might as well just jam. Oof, that's huge. Uh, I'm not going to play the Depths here. Am I? I, I think I am. Yeah, I think, I think I'm being too niche if I don't play it. Like, with the Wasteland in play, it's already in play, so... Loam does also make it a lot safer, that's very correct. But the, the choke here is real, the double choke was really nice. Double Wasteland, okay. Bob. Hmm. I don't mind going for crop now. Hmm. I actually like the thought of getting the bob into play more than the loam. But I also don't want to give them black mana. So potentially I just go for the swamp here. Yeah, I like that. Could also get a fetch land and then get the swamp because then the fetch I can also get back with loam. That's a big consideration. Turning stage into a... Uh, I guess Water Grave would give me black mana for one turn, but then sadly it would stay tapped due to the choke. But that is all good. Hey B Golem, if you type uh, exclamation point deck list, you'll be able to find the list. Oh, really? Apologies then. Apologies. Let me update it right now. There's one... Mox. Oh, Mox is actually really nice here. Um, clear deck. Hey Eli, thanks for the follow. Hope you're well. Grimplex, Saga Depths. Nice. Alright, Cardboard Live should be updated. If it hasn't, I would uh, suggest refreshing the stream and then you'll be able to find it. So let's go for Loam first. Just hope no force negation. Oh no, okay. Uh, now we can cast Mox, Pitch, Play. Don't seize them. Hoof. Um, what do I actually care about here? I don't care about Merktide, I don't care about Expressive Iteration. Uh, I probably don't care about the Plague Engineer to be honest either because they're so far away from actually casting it. It's just going to be the Death Shadow. That's also great information that I can just pretty much go off next turn as well. Just going to find an answer for this Wasteland, but with Loam around it's going to be pretty tough for my opponent. They find a Misty. But to be fair, the Plague is also a 4-drop because they don't want to tap off the Wasteland. Um, I don't want to Loam here. Thoughtseize again. Okay. Hmm. Upkeep create is actually pretty cool because then we can yeah kind of force that um to be fair they're at nine 
So I could just see Shadow Spear getting there. I'm going to take the Merc Tide here because one land gives them access to the Merc Tide. And if they tap out off the Wasteland, then I'm pretty happy for that anyway. The Shadow Spear is also really nice because it gains us life. And the Bob, of course, makes us lose life, so. Hmm. <laughs> they wastelanded the wasteland. Alright. Nice little first game, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Bob there just uh, doing exactly what the Maverick Joe intended. Uh, who was the challenger of this challenge, which is to trophy with Adepts or Maverick list with Dark Confidant. I get five tries, and if I get one of them, it's 300 bucks, which is pretty cool. So a huge thank you. That pretty much covers the hosting, etc., of the Green Sun Zenith for a year, which is pretty awesome. So a big shout out to Joe and his kids, who I know are an active fan of the channel. Hey, Cox. Hope you're well. Thanks for the follow. Alright. On the play, which is nice. And our hand isn't too bad. Like, nice and low to the ground. Chem one Reclaimer, turn two Bob potentially, or just hold up uh, Reclaimer. Pretty happy to keep this. Gonna get a Bayou as well to make sure we can cast turn two Bob. Kind of a six with the Shadow Spear, but. Pretty happy otherwise. Hey Maverick Joe, there he is. I finally got around to the challenge, but I'm very cool to see how it goes because yeah, Bob's been impressive so far, <laughs> uh, which is really nice to see. Oh, Chrome Mox probably means we're out here. Oh, Suppression Field? This could be Soldiers. Oh, Suppression Field. Okay. That's obviously quite good. Suppression Field hits a lot of our stuff. It hits Reclaimer, it hits uh, Thespian Stage, uh, you name it. It hits uh, Hex Mage, Shadow Spear. Oh, Four Mana. Please don't be Palace Jailer. Archon's pretty good here. Okay. We got some plays. Ooh, is this... Damn, that's also Saga. That's pretty rough. Hmm. I think I will Thoughtseize here. It's going to be an enlistment officer here. This card's really good. It's a bit like a goblin ringleader. Um. Wow, even Ghost Quarter is an acti activated ability. So I can't even like, I can't even be aggressive here. Attack with the claimer, see if they block. Uh, Ghost Quarter myself, make this, or get a forest, make this a 3-4, kill the Archon, second main, play Reclaimer. Tough. Alright. 
All right, captain's down. Maybe Mox was better there. I was thinking that Mox wasn't great because it's my one spell for the turn. And I think we're just going to get rid of the Saga, potentially. Needle is my last card. Which currently doesn't do a whole lot. Palace Jailer. Okay, at least here we can uh, get Sajiri Step. Oh no, because this costs even more. It costs four? Yeah, we can't even crop rot. Alright. Suppression Field really strong against this deck. Big yikes. Yeah, fetching is also an activated ability, so. Wow, no attacks. Really wanting to protect that uh ability. I also meant to uh Yeah, double suppression field. I can't I can't beat that. That's really tough. Alright. Uh I do like the force of vigors. I do like the Sudden Edicts, but I, I don't think I need the Palace Jailers. They're definitely interesting, but maybe not where I want to be. Yeah, Tab is pretty good, especially if they go wide. Uh, I think Tab is probably just better than Bog, like that's an easy kind of trade out. The Mox Diamonds I don't mind either, especially allowing us to try to ramp out a, a turn one play. So I think that's a pretty easy switch. Yeah, maybe there's a world where like I take out the Hand Disruption? Hand Disruption's kind of nice, especially if they... especially on the play. Uh, I believe Soldier Stompy plays Wasteland. And I believe they also play Caracas. But maybe not because of Suppression Field. Maybe that's actually just, yeah, incorrect. Yeah, like, yeah, we can see, like, some play. This is pretty old, but... Um... Oh, that's cool. Our opponent actually came first in the Legacy Challenge last week on Painter, which is pretty sweet. Maybe it is Needle, and then we just have Ghost Quarter for Caracas if needed. I don't mind that. And then I might just go down on Thought Teasers and bring in the two Plagues. I think that's... that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, like we have the combo, which is quite nice. We also have, uh, basic into Dark Confidant. We have Force of Vigor if needed. Uh, 
Also, if I go uh, forest, Urborg, Thespian stage, we then just have open turn three, which is pretty nice. So I am going to fetch for the basic now. Just to not draw it. A green card would be perfect here. We don't, but we do get the Dark Depths. Yeah, I do think su Suppression Field is probably a big reason why soldiers might traditionally not play Wasteland. That's pretty good. Okay. Hey Bush, welcome. They have a mana floating. You are more than welcome. I... Yeah, I think we can let this resolve and then see what else they play. Interesting. That's fine. I cast two spells! That's why you don't- Ah, oh, no! That's why you do it in response to the suppression field! No! Oh, that's classic. That is classic. I didn't need to force the suppression field. I could have just cropped in response and then just cast the one spell. I totally forgot this flips. Oh, they cast the two spells? Okay, there we go. Okay, that's all good. Well, there goes the trophy. But we can still finish 4-1, which is nice. Tough. Tough. Up against true. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty nice in. That is fine.
It's kind of nice now as well that the pressure of the 5-0 is off. They chose to not shuffle. Interesting. Dotsies? Reclaimer. I'm doing this to play around days. Oh. Now I'm going to wait for upkeep. To play around Wasteland. I guess they could have like Fatal Push and also... No. I guess they could have had like land, fatal push, sudden edict. But they chose to shuffle there. They're gonna draw a street wraith. Maybe trying to find land into Brazen Borrow main deck. Nice. Alright, we'll take that. Death Shadow. Choke. Yes. Sudden Edict. Yes. I don't mind Retrofit of Foundry in this matchup. I think it's pretty strong if the game goes semi-long, just to be able to. Uh, for two mana block Death Shadow is pretty cool. I don't mind just skimping down on crop. Uh, with the Bloom's interesting, but not really where I want to be. Getting back a land is kind of cool. I guess it actually does destroy Death Shadow. So, uh, Caracas can come out. Uh, Needle for Wasteland. I don't think I need a second one. Uh, the Besaju... I can also take out. 27 lands with 4 mocks is more than fine. Uh, I also don't mind just going down on Hand Disruption. I like 3 Thoughtseize as it also hits Murktide. Arnie, that's a great point. Uh, Foundry also insulating against Sudden Edict is fantastic. Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well. You've been on a, a burner with Naya Depths, which is very cool to see. Um, an interesting hand. We don't have a green source, which is why I am going to not keep this. Especially if our opponent, like, turn one thought teases us and takes a sudden edict. We don't really have that much of a plan, so. Uh, this is a great hand. I'll keep this in bottom one mox. Opponent also went to six. Sure. Oh, they take the Moxon. Interesting. Hmm. Um, so they know about stage. That means they obviously have like a uh, a fatal push in hand. That's probably why they take the the Moxon over the Dark Confidant. No shuffle. One Death Shadow. Okay. Hmm. I could try to get the Saga online here. I could also play the stage so that if we draw into Crop Rotation, we then can play Dark Depths next turn and just have Crop Rotation up for Urborg or Yavamaya. I think because this Shadow's in play, I kind of want to get the combo going. Okay. Dotsies. I think I do want to do this. Hmm. Take the dress down because that's just lethal next turn. And 
and then play Saga, because if they draw Wasteland and I play the Depths, we do nothing, but at least here we get to hold up the Saga potentially next turn. If it matters. It's going to be tough though, because we take 8, go to 5, and then we have Dark Depths to block one, but not the other. So to be fair, I might as well play around Wasteland here and just make the 2020. And just say, hey, you need to... I, I believe we know they have another shock, so I think this is just over. No? Do they have Dress Down? Um... Can we get... Oh, we have Sajiri Step for Pro, so... I think we get Retrofitter Foundry. Because if they have Dress Down... Uh... I guess they have to have... No, they... What? It can't be dressed down because they would have won with that. It can't be dressed down because they would have attacked with two 13-13s. It wouldn't be Brazen Borrower because then they would just attack into me and kill me. So I'm not too sure what they could have that matters. Because if I attack, they block with one Death Shadow if it loses flying somehow. Like if they just didn't see the dress down line? Because can't they... Yeah, I, f I feel like it's Retrofitter Foundry here. Even if they had Sudden Edict, they should have done it in their turn. Oh, what is it? <laughs> it, it can't be a bounce spell. It's got to be pro black and just they missed the dress down line potentially. Dress down snuff out. Oh. Yeah, big bluff. I'm not too sure. But hey, pretty cool to get there. Yes, but Dress Down also just makes the Death Shadows 13-13s. So if they have Dress Down, they can win in their turn. Which I assume is just another reason why they run Dress Down in the main deck. Or maybe Cyborg, but... Uh, Dress Down might actually make it lose protection. That is yeah i could definitely see that happen actually so maybe dress down does beat sajiri step which is pretty cool yeah hey punishing waterfalls welcome tough the brutal cathar was just for lack of a better term brutal all right Burrow run. Uh, pretty sweet hand. Pretty happy to keep this. Pretty happy to turn one Thought Seize as well. Oh, this looks like it's uh, going to be Death Shadow again. Pretty happy to take the Thought Seize here. Next time we can play around days anyway. Brutal Cathar is great first Merc Tide. 
Denying the information is also very handy, correct. This preordain. Hey Dan. Hey, there's a big fan here in you, so Wow, really aggressive. But I guess that makes sense as well with double days in hand. Okay. This also means I can just go for forest, which is now a bayou, thankfully. And just get reclaimer back online. Hope you're well, Dan. Hope the family is well. Hope work and, and the weather and your job and everything is just going just going really good. <laughs> Double. Oh, Merktide. Nice. Alright. Well, we do have a Hex Mage, which can slow that down, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Seiju. Hmm. So we we know their hand. It's all counter magic and flooded strand. They can also currently double days if needed. Honestly, the play could just be, uh, Beseju crop right now, see if they do anything, and if not, then we can just get, uh, Thespian Stage, and then turn the Forest into Dark Depths, and then we have the combo online without having to play the Hex Mage, which is kind of cool. Ooh. Ooh, okay, I've got a line for you all. My line was going to be, and this is actually pretty cool, play Hexmage, attack with the 1-2 Reclaimer, see if they block. If they block, use Hexmage to turn this into a 3-3 three, three, and then fetch to make this a 3-4. But sadly, we're not going to get that chance. But that's all good. They play it tapped. Interesting. Oh, they drew snuff out. Wow. Okay. Well, now we need to find one of the pieces again. The claimer is one of the pieces. Yeah, I think the crop bolt line was probably correct. My reasoning for holding crop rotation here is that it allows me to get Sajiri step if needed. Hmm. Ah, because this does just counter it hard up because they control this. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think here we just get... Hmm. I think it's stage. The only reason to get Dark Depths is that it turns on the natural draw of either stage or Hex Mage, but getting stage uh, only turns on Dark Depths. 
Um, and we, we would need to draw a land off the top as well to be able to stage and also Reclaimer. Because we need our four mana left over. So two mana for the activation and two mana for stage to copy. So I think in that case it's going to be... No, because the stage comes in tapped off the Reclaimer as well. So we have to go for stage now. And then hopefully draw into a land next turn. Because even if we are drawn to Hexmage next turn, we can just play Hexmage. And then we can just go and grab de Depths with the other two mana. So it actually makes sense to get stage here. Uh, and then I also, just to play around Wasteland to some extent... I'm going to copy this forest right now and then pass. Hey Martin, thank you very much. Okay, looking good, looking good. Oh, nice. So here, just to play around Wasteland as well. Black, black. Sack this. Go and get Depths. One, two. This, copy this. Keep this one. Brainstorm, sure. Yorion Glimpse Elementals. Nice. <laughs> Those are three words that I didn't think I would see today together, and I'm very happy that I did. Oh. The Flooded Strand crack here makes me think they have a bounce effect. Oh, this is interesting. But thankfully, we still have Step in the deck, which gives us an out to the Murktide. Nice. Very cool. Um, that was game one. So let's do what we did last time. Double Choke. Double Sudden Edict. Retrofitter. Uh, no Besaju, no Caracas. Uh, down on Crop. Down on Inquisition. Down on Thoughtseize. I did like that setup. Um, the map's still pretty strong. I kind of like everything else. I don't think Leyline is worth it just for Merktide either. I think we just have a lot of ways to kind of get around Merktide, which is nice. 8-2 last night? Very nice. That's sweet. Uh, yeah, this is a sweet hand. I'll keep this. We have the combo ready. We have Termin Interaction. We have Acceleration as well. Pretty sweet. Uh, decklist can be found with exclamation point decklist. They probably just take out thought seas to be fair, because we have the combo, the crop isn't that great. Yeah. Dabs. Hmm. This is interesting. I could leave with the moxen, but if they daze it, then we lose the mox. If I play the stage and then play the Mox. They could then force the Mox if they really wanted to be aggressive, and then Wasteland the stage. But I also don't really want to play the Swamp here. I'd rather... Maybe I will. Yeah, maybe it's just... Mm. No, let's go fetch land, Mox, pitch the Swamp. That makes sense. I don't want to lose a Dark Depths just in case they're playing Surgical as a way to get rid of the combo. That would kind of suck. <laughs> here you go, mate. There you go. You should be able to see it uh, over here in on the cupboard life functionality. Chose not to shuffle. Ponder. Oh, 
Honestly, here, I don't mind just cropping for Bog. It takes him off the potential for a, a turn 3 Merktide. Uh, and in that case, I'm happy to get Bayou and just throw away the Bayou. Bob's actually pretty nice. They chose to shuffle and they missed a land drop, which is pretty huge for us. Ooh, that's actually pretty, pretty big as well. I could just make it. Um, which plays around Wasteland. But so does Needle and Wasteland. They did keep with two, two shuffles. So I feel like they do have a Brazen Borrower. So I don't think just going for it here makes sense. I think just playing Needle on Wasteland is fine. Which to be fair, like they could also Brazen Borrower the Needle aggressively, then play Wasteland. Or even just play Wasteland, hold up Brazen Borrower. Find a fetch land, that's pretty huge. Okay. There's no real way to wait it out. I mean, we do have one piece of the combo, which is nice. So, uh, a stage off the top, a hex mage off the top. There's a few things here that that does pretty well. I could wait for a creature to also play around sudden edict, but we're playing depths. We're playing turbo depths, and I just want to turbo out a depth. So, see how this goes. I'm going to play the Depths in case they have a Hindered Turak. It also just uh, turns on a live draw of Thespian Stage off the top. Merktide will cost two. Oh, Gurmag. Okay. Old school. Now they can just hold up Brazen Borrower play. Ooh. This doesn't tap for mana, unfortunately, so we will just have to pass here. This will be eight a turn, which is a three turn clock. Opponent also getting close to Witherbloom command, just being lethal, which is kind of cool. I think with that brainstorm they were digging for that third land and they found the scalding tons, so kudos to them. Hmm. 
there is a world where I don't play this just to get like to not give them the information, but I think it's fine. Now we are dead. Yeah. Because even if we block one creature, we take lethal. Unless they attack weird. That's our, that's our out here. Nice. Hmm. I think I'm still okay with everything and just running it back. Yeah. All right, on the play, which is fantastic. And we have an awkward draw of a turn two Bob, but just not good enough in my eyes against this deck. Um. really relies on the map but I, I think that's okay probably gonna bottom the second stage here map most likely gonna be getting uh no this is actually pretty interesting because if we go turn one stage turn two saga crack map Untap Saga goes to two counters. We then yeah, that's actually pretty good. We can we can keep this in bottom of the stage. That's all fine and dandy. Now that's interesting. But I don't think it changes anything. Pretty happy to see if we could draw potentially a land next turn and then we could play Dark Depths and then play Moxon as well. <laughs> hey Burden, thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. They chose to not shuffle, they have the shuffle from the Scalding Time. Okay. Chose to not shuffle, but now they're going to brainstorm. I, sh I I believe I should have, yeah. So I actually made a mistake there. Uh, because they've tapped out of two mana for the turn, being Brazen Borrow or Bounce, I should have made the token in response to Brainstorm, so that after Brainstorm, when they get priority, they can't play Wasteland. So that was definitely a, a key moment there that I could have really thrown away any chance of winning this game as early as next turn. I should have 
I, like I, uh, I think because of the Brazen Borrowers, they're probably not playing Submerge. And actually, I currently don't have any forests in play. So there, the correct decision was make your 2020 in response to Brainstorm. Don't allow them to have priority after the Brainstorm. But hey, not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty nice for like a, a slow hand, but you know, if my opponent doesn't have a way to interact with the combo in hand, they just have to try to win quicker. And thankfully we were in a position where it just didn't matter. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. But hey, thanks for coming in and watching. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday evening as well uh, with a list from Michael Mapson, which is pretty cool. It's a green black loam list, which I believe Reaple Cheap has also been doing really well with. Uh, and might have been Reaple Cheap's nest egg, but I'll have to double check on that. But, but the, the deck's been pretty nice so far. Um, that Soldier Stompy game was a beating. And otherwise, it's felt pretty solid. We haven't seen Witherbloom Command yet. Which I kind of want to see. This is where we open up our hand. There's two in there. No, but... Um, this hand is definitely interesting. We have turn one map. Probably off Urborg because it turns on the ability to either draw into Dark Depths, play Dark Depths, play Hex Mage, make the 2020, or draw into Mox Diamond, which would allow us to uh, play a land, play Hex Mage. Mox Diamond gives us green for crop. The, the tough thing is that we have some cards we kind of want to instant speed against decks with crop rotation. But I think this hand is is keepable. Thinking of signing, switching out your LEDs for a set of Moxen. I have, well, I'm luckily enough to have both. But I did have a situation where I had LEDs and didn't have Moxen, and I was in the same situation because, for me, I felt that I could play a lot more decks that I liked with Mox Diamond than LEDs. But both are really nice staples to have in Legacy. Misty Pass. There's Witherbloom Command. That's kind of cool. Um, look, we're just going to be playing Ghost Quarter Pass. With map open. Ah, okay. This is looking to be Blue Red Delver. Unless it's another Grixis kind of Death Shadow deck, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume this is gonna be Delver. Which is kind of weird not to have a turn one play, but I think this Volk will give it away. It is gonna be Delver. Okay. Uh well now it's really nice for us because we can just get Dark Depths here. Play Dark Depths. Play Hex Mage. Make them have a force. Can't be force and negation, which is relevant, especially in game one. Force Pitch Ponder. The Ghost Quarter here is also quite nice, because it means that we could potentially turn the Dark Depths into a forest if they waste into the Dark Depths. Murktide. Okay. 
and wasteland. Wow. They have two cards left. Hmm. Hey, Raced. Thank you very much for the raid. Uh, let me know what you just played and how you went. And welcome all those from uh, from Race Stream. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. This is actually an interesting spot. Do I really need the green? I guess turning the Ghost Quarter into a green source isn't too bad. I can't play around days, unfortunately. But... I think it's worth it. Because we untap with two mana. Or we untap with a... Yeah. I think it's worth it. Forest. I could also crop right now if I really wanted to. But I think I'm rather going to crop in their turn. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think it's worth... I think the best draw is probably going to be Mox Diamond. Because then we can just play everything around days. I'm also going to... Now, this is an interesting spot. If their last two cards are blue card and force of negation, I do get punished for not crop rotating in their upkeep. But if they have brainstorm and they brainstorm into force of will, then the crop is obviously not as great. But I think here I'm pretty happy to see if this just happens now. And if they have force of negation, they have force of negation. Nice. Uh, I'm also just going to play around Wasteland as well. They're most likely digging here for... They chose to shuffle, which is great for us, but I assume they're trying to find a um, Brazen Barola. Interestingly enough here as well, they'll lose the Dragon Rage Channeler uh, to the Merit Lage because they have to now attack with the Dragon Rage Channeler. So what they could have done is done this all in main phase two so they didn't lose the DRC. And then maybe found a way to uh, Merc Tide again to then lose their graveyard to keep the DRC back again if they, if they really needed to. But yeah, pretty happy to block here. Now we have some nice outs in like Crop Rotation for Sajiri Step. Especially with only one card in my opponent's hand. I guess they get two here from the bauble, but... Reclaimer. I guess another bog isn't too bad. Ooh. I could mill Sejuri Step. That would be a pretty sweet way to grab this game. So I go play a mill three, and then you return a land. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Uh, is this for the mill? Yeah, because it's opponent. Yeah, target opponent. We don't hit. That's fine. We do hit bog, which is nice. Bog after oh yeah, bog after attacks is just better, but that's all good. This this is all good. They have to block, which is nice. So we're we're doing okay. But I, I should have definitely been aware of that. 
happy to throw this into a daze. Nothing. This also turns on the jury step next turn if the route is currently just blocking with a flyer. Submerge is thankfully uh, post board. This is game one, so hopefully no main deck submerge. Nice. All right, uh, we are going to be looking at Delver. I don't mind taking out the bobs, especially on the draw. I do like uh, the chokes, the edicts. The soul guide, I think, is also quite good. It's probably better than Caracas. Um, Thought is like the hand disruption is pretty rough. I could see a world of Leyline, and then potentially Plague is actually pretty good because it just hits DRCs and um, Delver's being... I don't think that's the game I want to play though. I don't think Plague Engineer is worth it. I don't mind some amount of, of Thoughtseize. I also don't mind the extra Needle. I wonder if they play... They probably bring in Meltdown. I want to live in a main deck submerged world more than I do a main deck Pyroblast world. See, main deck Pyroblast world doesn't affect me, so I'm pretty happy with that. What do I think about Minsk, Minsk and Boo? I think it's a fantastic card that would be seeing a lot more legacy play in the mainstream world if it was on MTGO. Hmm. I don't mind a Bob. I think it's just going to be a second needle. Turn one needle on Wasteland is just so strong that I really, really enjoy it. And there's the needle. And we literally have turn one needle off Urborg and then Dark Depths for Hex Mage. Look, it's greedy, but we're up a game, so pretty happy to keep this. Uh, also, someone asked about Endurance before. I do like Endurance, I just don't think this deck has a high enough green count um, for it to really be good enough for the matches where I want it on game, on turn one. Or turn zero in some instances against decks like Reanimator. But you could definitely twist the shell around to be a little bit more green heavy. Opponent went to six cards. They didn't have a daze for the needle. Yeah, so I don't think they have a daze for the hex mage. Which now makes this awkward for them because they kind of have to just hold up Raisin Borrower the whole time. But I'm probably pretty happy just to. Hmm. What do we think, chat? What do we think? Hey, Duke of War, that is just the best comment ever. A huge thank you, that's really cool. What's our line if we wait? Uh, it's just gonna be Hex Made Beats. I think, I think we just go for it. I just think we go for it. But a huge thank you, Duke of War. That, uh, that's, ev that, that's everything. Ah! Alright. 
<laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. <laughs> no! Oh. Uh. <laughs> that's all good. That's all good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this, this is magic as intended. <laughs> oh, come on, fun police. What is this? Look, Thespian Stage off the top is also a really good draw, so... Oh, not too bad. What do you got? Merktide? Merktide would be cool. Oh, they play Submerge. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so quick look. Uh, by playing the Choke, we have to find a green source. Which does turn on the submerge. Uh, the bolts we can play around. I think it might just be the iteration here. As the iteration does kind of draw them out of this this stranglehold they've been on. Yeah, I really don't mind just taking them off the iteration here. This is quite nice as well because now they have a tapped land. That the choke will hit if we hit a green source off the top. That was a hilarious first few turns as well. Ah, close. Hmm. Okay. Ah, so close. But no cigar. At least to be fair, the wasteland here does turn on uh, reclaim as being three fours. All right, Reclaimers, let's go. <laughs> let's go. To be fair, like the Reclaimers could just get there. Oh, they're going to try to... Hmm. This is an interesting trade. One Reclaimer for a Bolt and a DRC. I don't think there's a... I don't think there's a world where... I think this is worth it. Yeah. Like, the, the two for one is just pretty huge. Yeah. Oh no, they melt down dust. Uh, that's all good. This is a fantastic game. This is the type of game that I love to play against a, a Delver deck. An Urborg would be really nice. Uh, Urborg to be able to trade this. Dark Depths away for a uh, Thespian stage and then use Urborg in stage to then copy Dark Depths or Dark Depths and Urborg to turn stage into a Dark Depths.
Green source isn't bad, but we do know about the submerge. But to be fair, getting two reclaimers on the board is just nice. Oh, they're brainstorm locked. Now that's huge. And they didn't play a land. Verdant. Oh, what are they going to surgical? Saga. Okay. That's fine. We can't choke here because the Dark Depths doesn't tap for mana. Unfortunately. Uh, I'm pretty happy to just attack with the Reclaimer. There's also there's also a line of just going for the combo over time. We do not have a second swamp, we only have one of each basic. But luckily we could kind of rotate away something before they can submerge, which is quite nice. I don't mind that. I don't mind getting a, a bayou here. Hmm. Bayou and then sack it straight away. That doesn't really do much anyway. Uh. Unfortunately, they'd probably submerge the Reclaim here. So I think the play is to get Bayou, and then before they can do anything, we can t turn the Bayou into stage. And then if we don't draw a land next turn to combo off, we can uh, just turn this Dark Depths into Urborg, and then next turn, the following turn, play Dark Depths, which is cool. So we, we got time, which is nice. They thankfully, because uh, sacrificing the forest is part of the cost, they don't have a, a moment where they can cast the submerge for free, which is cool. Because when I activate Reclaimer, I give them priority, it then resolves, and then I have priority, I sacrifice the Bayou, it's off the field, Reclaimer's ability is on the stack, and then they can, res they can then respond, but then they don't actually have priority between where I have a forest. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think here we're just going to do this now. Yeah, it's tough if I cycle the depths because then... Um, it does turn on Submerge, so. Uh, 
This is quite nice as well because uh, I get to combo off next turn and also play the other depths to then have Reclaimer open if needed. They're gonna go... Oh, they found Wasteland. Okay. Do they Wasteland now? They shouldn't. They should always wait. Wow, they go after the Dark Depths as well. That's huge. That's a huge win for us. <laughs> Alright, well, we go 4-1, which is pretty sweet. And pretty close to where we thought we might go. Um, which is pretty nice. Pretty tough for them. Like, yeah. I, I guess if they thought we had some sort of way to interact, uh, then it does buy some time. But yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. But pretty happy with the deck. Uh, I don't think anything stood out that I'd want to change. But there were some some cool things. We actually never really used Saga, which is interesting. Uh... I think the hand disruption was quite nice. I wouldn't mind trying to fit in another Inquisition. The Wither Blooms are the cards that we didn't really see. Uh, and it's a question of either increasing Inquisition, taking out a Wither Bloom, and then maybe just keeping like another Loam potentially. That would be kind of cool. Uh, I could also see myself going up on Saga if I wanted to. I don't know if I want the Arbor. Uh, because in this version you can't ramp with Arbor, which is which is the big thing. Uh, and with Sudden Edict being the main sacrifice spell, it doesn't do the other half of what you want it to do in depths, which is uh, have a creature around to kind of get around something like Diabolic Edict. Uh, I guess Urza's Saga is kind of our Dried Arbor in a way that it gives us one, which is cool. Yeah, the tough thing is that, like, if we don't have the Dark Depths, that then sometimes winning with Reclaimers or or Bobs and Hex Mages is, is just a bit rough. So that's where Saga can be really strong. Um, Saga can also just be a win con on its own, which is really nice. But I think that those matchups tonight being mostly Delva is just not where you want to typically see Saga. And to be fair, like, <laughs> uh, Mono White Soldiers with Suppression Field is very good against Saga, so... It's a pretty nice uh, metagame choice. Is there something I'd recommend for Mox Diamond? Uh, if I couldn't play Mox Diamond, I would play uh, Lotus Petal, but I'd probably move towards Rainbow Depths instead of just having Green Black Depths. But yeah, the Sagas are quite nice because they do uh, have multiple sort of rolls in the deck. They find me Shadow Spear, with, which gets over blockers. Uh, and can also just be a great card against something like Delva on a Reclaimer. Uh, Needle, of course, is fantastic against Wasteland and Caracas. Map is fantastic because uh, one of my only ways in the main deck is to to get out from a turn one or game one in Snaring Bridge is Beseju. And Map is my way to find it and put it into hand, which is kind of cool. Map, of course, also just being able to find either piece of the combo or find another Saga is really cool. Uh, I think the Saga is also better in a Mox Diamond build because the, the mana is also around. The, the artifact's always going to be in play, unlike a Lotus Petal. But I actually might have Green Black Depths, no Saga. That's Mox Diamond. Green Black, uh, Green White, no, that's an old one. Yeah, I would look at Rainbow Depths if I was going to be playing with Petals. It's really good, and I believe uh, two weekends ago it came second in the Legacy Challenge, which is really cool. Uh, the Sunday one as well, I believe, which is the, the bigger event. Um, but this is typically just, yeah, one of the, the best ways to get into Legacy as well. It's very cheap. The only thing I will say about that is that you are buying Mana Confluids and Gemstone Mines, which I think are like 30 to 40 and 20 to 30 dollars each. Which is tough because although it's a budget deck, you are buying cards that don't fit into other decks that are that, that, are that relevant in the current metagame. So like you could spend like 
probably around $250 to $300 on these. Or you could try to find like a beat up Bayou. And then you have a Bayou, which is pretty cool. So that's definitely a consideration that although this is a, a cheap deck, you are putting money into some cards that aren't necessarily staples of the format. So if you're looking to find a deck that you just want to rep and just play for years, this is a fantastic choice, but it can be tough. Um, you know, if you are on a budget, putting money into Mana Confluence and Gemstone Mines and then realizing that they don't really go into other decks other than things like Dredge. So that's, that's pretty tough. Um, there is also a few versions of Naya Depths running around that don't play Mox Diamond and play uh, Arboreal Grazers um, or some other cards, which are very cool. Um, so you could definitely check that, that out as well. But yeah, not too bad for challenge number one. There are going to be up to five of these. So looking to, yeah, maybe change some things. Maybe just go with this list that I have right now and see how that goes. But that should be uh, pretty sweet. And that's going to be me. So a huge thank you to you guys for coming in and watching. A huge thank you to the new subs and followers of the channel. Of course, if you want to find me on YouTube, you can find everything here. You can find me on Twitter. And of course, you can find me at thegreensundina.com, which is definitely on my radar to update. It's just about finding some time. But a huge thank you once again. Um, yeah, a huge thank you to Joe as well for the challenge. Really, really fun. Bob is an exceptional card, and I've really enjoyed playing with it. So yeah, huge thank you. Uh, I'm going to quickly see who else is playing. I believe True Hero was on. It looks like Tagores is on playing some modern, which is nice. So I'll send you guys over there. But until then, stay safe, be well. Thank you all, and I'll uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.